Welcome back to the channel everybody. We're going to be continuing our blind SQL injection series today and we will be tackling the medium level difficulty challenge on DVWA. There will be some differences that we'll have to address compared with the low level difficulty challenge from our last video, but um, it should be pretty exciting and we'll you know, have to address a very poorly implemented mitigation and it, this will kind of branch us off into a deeper level of understanding of how to exploit these type of vulnerabilities so let's uh let's jump into it so the first thing that we'll want to do is make sure that our dvwa instance is running if you are unsure how to set up dvwa on your on your own you can check out the first part of this series where we go over the setup steps for dvwa but for today we'll just be running this docker command and once we have everything running and good to go, we will log in. Now a uh, key piece here, by default, our security level is going to be set to low, but I feel like it's important to do a quick review of what we discovered last time. So last time we discovered that we, if we injected you know, a query such as this, we could kind of build off of it. You know, let me increment this a little bit for demonstration purposes but we discovered that we could you know, kind of inject sql queries into this page and we would get some feedback saying an, an id was missing or an id existed in the database and we kind of built an exploit around this boolean based logic and we'll be doing something pretty similar today so let's change our difficulty level to medium Go back, and now we see our first difference. So immediately we can recognize that the page has changed quite a bit since the last time that we saw it. And the backend code has changed as well. So this time our parameters are being sent to the page via post requests. So that will be our first major change. Additionally, we have a poorly implemented mitigation where our input is being escaped with my sqli real escape string and this is going to make it a little problematic for us to inject queries into the page we won't be able to use single quotes or double quotes however there is some faulty logic here still and we can still get an injection it's just um in in our case we'll just have to terminate our input as part of the query instead of trying to escape the input Let's, um, let's play around with the page a little bit and um, see what happens, right? So we see that several user IDs exist. So let's open this up in Burp. We will add our site to the scope. Go to proxy, make sure intercept is turned off and configure our browser to use Burp Suite. So let's send this request again and take a look at it. So another small difference that we will need to address is our security cookie value has changed from low to medium. So now that we're looking at this request with Burp Suite, let's send this off to repeater. And let's try and change the ID value to something that probably doesn't exist. And we see that we still have this boolean base logic. So let's try changing the ID parameter to a value that we know exists. And we will attempt to escape it and inject a sleep query. Let's see if this injection still works. And if you remember from last time, we will have to URL encode our input for the page to accept it properly. So unfortunately our injection did not work. We would expect Burp to kind of seize up a little bit if that injection were to have worked. And like I was saying before, that's part of the challenge with my SQLI real escape string. So let's take a look at the PHP documentation for my SQLI real escape string and get a better understanding of exactly what it's looking for. So my SQLI real escape string will escape special characters for any 
attempted injection. We will be able to bypass this, however, but um, the, the characters that we won't be able to use in our injection are null characters, new lines, carriage returns, backslashes, single quotes, double quotes, and control Z characters. Now we can go about this a number of different ways. We can potentially bypass this with some special encoding. We may be able to use Unicode characters, but with the way that this page accepts our input, we should be able to actually directly append an SQL query directly from our input. So we won't actually have to break out of out of the the input at all. We we can just directly put in SQL syntax and it should work. So let's go back to Burp Suite and test that. So let's try that same sleep injection, but this time without attempting to escape the input. Once again, we will URL encode it. And let's see if Burp seizes up. And look at that. We have a successful sleep query injection. So we know that this is a known good injection. So let's go back to our exploit and put this in and write up some, some notes on things that needed to be changed. We will get rid of our old request since that was for the low difficulty challenge and we will come down to our fancy little injection loop and add a known good. So we will need to remove this single quote and this portion of our exploit should be okay. We shouldn't have to change anything else down here. But what we will need to change is the method by which we are injecting. So instead of a get request, we will need a post. And we will also need to grab our parameters and pull them out of this and set them into their own variable that will probably make our life a little bit easier. You know, let's actually change this so that it is burp data. So now down here, we need to add a value to our request.post method so that data is equal to burp data. And the rest of that should be okay. So even though our injection worked, there's a very small but very important difference between this injection and the injections from the low difficulty challenge. And that is the response that we get via our injection. So if you remember from the first part of our series, any injected query that we sent that resulted in like a, like a false type Boolean based response, we would get an HTTP 404 response, but we are now getting a 200 response. So we'll have to find some other way to determine Boolean-based logic on the response. So let's open up our intercept tab and turn intercept on and then play around with the injection once again. Okay, so we will send this request again. Now this time, let's change it to our known good injection and see if we can determine any differences between our good injection and one that we know is going to result in some sort of error. So we will URL encode the key characters once again. And we see that we get a different content length in the response of our page. So for ones that resulted in the user ID existing, we get a content length value of 4,699. 
and for ones where the user ID did not exist but our injection worked, we have a content length of 4705. So let's update our exploit with this information. It may also help for us to copy our request. So here we want to change our logic to work around the content length of the response body instead of the status code of the response. So what we want our exploit logic to say now, instead of looking for a specific HTTP response value, we want to look at the content length of the response body. So we will need to convert the content length headers of our response. And we will want to compare the content length of the response to something that we know is going to give us a valid injection. And if we find a valid injection, we want to return the character of the response of the injection. So similar to last time, we will be brute forcing the value of our injected query, one by one, character by character, from the leftmost position going right until we run out of characters. And if we come across a character that does not match a content length of 4,705 bytes in the response body, we want to return that character as a known value for our injected query. So let's actually save this as medium.py. Okay, so there's going to be some updates that we're going to need to make to the old exploit for this to be adapted to our medium level difficulty challenge. So we've already identified that the PHP SES ID and security cookie values will need to be updated. But um, you know, I've also kind of you know, just thrown this burp data variable in kind of haphazardly. So we're going to need to clean that up as well. And then um, we'll... Uh, We'll see what works. And, you know, I can also see that I fat fingered this as well. So let's fix that first. This needs to be wrapped in parentheses. And we will update these cookie values. And let's fix our burp data variable. Close that off, and I think that should be all right. So let's run our updated exploit and see if anything breaks. Okay, so something didn't go quite right. Let's open up Burp Suite and see if we can figure out what happened. This is very small but important weird oddity that's going on. Um, somehow our input is being double URL encoded. So let's go back to the exploit and see if we can clean that up a little bit. And there you go, the medium difficulty challenge has been solved. So thanks once again for joining me, everybody. Uh, the last part of this series is going to be very chaotic and insane, but it should be pretty exciting. Um, we'll be faced with a very odd and bizarre implementation that we'll have to overcome. But um, we're going to be doing some pretty cool and pretty crazy things in the next one, so be on the lookout for that. And um, really appreciate all of the uh, love and support that you have all given me. It's... Um, very very endearing and i just wanted to say i appreciate every single one of you so thanks again for joining and we'll catch you in the next one